never ever have enough time to play at all. You know everybody wants to walk in someone else's shoes. Okay, I'm going to start the next video. This is going to cover track work. As you can see, I've got my I got my track plant in front of me. I attempted to print that at a one-to-one -one ratio so I could actually lay it on the sub road bed and and then trace it somehow on there and I can tell you my poor printer just did not cut it uh, just terrible so I ended up having to throw all that away it's not going to work that way so I'm not going to try it uh, I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way and for me that means actually getting out track switches uh, the turnouts actually putting it on the foam marking where everything's gonna go uh, cutting the track and then you know pinning it to the foam and then taking it back off marking where everything's supposed to go with a pin or a, or a marker of some kind and then going down with the road bed uh, you can see I've got green foam. I had the pink stuff on there and I decided that I didn't want to do two pieces of it because I only had the three quarter inch. And so when I went to the lumber store to get a one inch piece, they didn't have any pink, they had this green stuff. And I can tell you it's a much higher compressive strength. I think I'm gonna like it better than the pink stuff anyway. Uh, but there is one weird thing about it. They've got slits cut in it. I don't know if it'll show up on the video at, at all. No, it's not going to. But there's slits about every 10 inches. Uh, and they're almost all the way through the foam board. So I don't think it's going to cause me any problems. But you could probably just break it. You know, if you wanted a 10 inch strip, you could break it at that seam and that would be cool for some purposes uh, but I don't think it's going to cause me any problems. You also see these pieces of paper I have here. These are are the footprints of my buildings. I don't have any mock-ups for for what I'm gonna put down here. I, I didn't want to go to that much trouble to actually mock up the building in cardboard or foam board or anything like that so I just cut out the footprint uh, it's going to be pretty simple and I think they're going to work for my purposes. So I'm going to put the camera down and put some track down and get back in just a second. Okay, I'm close. I'm not quite where I want to be, but I'm close. I ran into a little bit of a snag on my track spacing. Uh, I went ahead and, and printed some some actual blueprints that, that came with some of my structures. When, when I first made this track plan, I didn't have all of my structures. I knew what my structures were going to be, and I went ahead and got the sizes for everything and kind of planned just by, by making makeshift pieces of paper, but at the time, I, you never really know exactly what they're gonna look like until, until you kind of mock them up or at least do something that gets you a little closer. Uh, you can see I've got my corrals there. That's, those are corrals. And when I first did it exactly by, by my track plan, it ended up putting my corrals into the backboard. And of course, that's, that's not going to work at all. So I had to kind of adjust a little thing. Uh, so I adjusted a little bit, and you, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got one line already drawn on here because that's where my original main line was going to go through, if you can see that red line there. Uh, so I had to shift about a half inch. I did that, and it helped, and then I ended up shifting my other two tracks a little bit, and that helped a little more, so I'm close, but I think I'm still going to have to move my main line one full more inch uh, closer to the front of the layout. Uh, and what I'm thinking, 
I don't know if you can see it on here or not, but I think I might be able to narrow up my corrals by about an inch and a half. Uh, I, I think I can, there, there's a fence row back there. I don't know if I can do this with one hand or not, but, but back here, if I take this whole area here where this alley is and I move it in pretty much the distance of the alley right now, move it in this way, I think I can gain myself a little bit of a little bit more space on the back side there for the backdrop and for a road maybe. I, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Uh, right now I'm not sure if if Bob the bull hauler has room to turn his rig around back there with it the way it is. Now this structure here, uh, I did, didn't even have it on my track plan because I couldn't find any dimensions for it whatsoever and it was kind of an afterthought to go along with this structure. Uh, this is DeWitt's coal is what I'm calling it. It's a Campbell's scale models structure. And I assumed that this structure was going to be much smaller than it is. And it turned out to be a huge building. And it would not fit in the same area here with, with DeWitt's. Because that was my original plan was to stick it in there somewhere. It'd be part of DeWitt's complex. And then, you know, my corrals originally were going to be back a little bit further. Uh, but I think this is going to work. I think. Uh, I'm just going to have to play it by ear and see. So, now down here at this end, you can see this, this is the, the biggest reason why I'm going to move my main line one inch closer to the front. Is because... The distance from a platform on my station to that turnout is just no bueno. I don't think that's going to work. The tolerances are too close. Uh, it's just a, a bad idea to go with that. So I think if I move everything in one more full inch, so it's at six inches now, if I bring this in to five inches, then I think I can live with that. Uh, and I might even be able to pull uh, Lale and Sons Steamworks and water well drilling further this way and give me a little bit more room on the end of the layout because I really don't like how close it is to the end of the layout here. Uh, in fact, I'm not 100% sure that I can get a steam engine to, because eventually this is, this is incomplete, of course but eventually there will be a water spout here to fill up the tender and I'm not sure that I've got enough room there so this whole thing really needs to slide a little bit to the right uh, and the next thing is I'm gonna to have to do a little adjustment here as well you can see on the back side of the building uh, by the time I bring that track off the turnout there's gonna be a pretty big gap here to the back side of of the fenced in area of the yard. So I'm gonna actually extend the yard, uh, you know, this direction to where it's gonna line up with the siding as it comes out. And I'm, I'm sure uh, Larry, Gary, and Bob will be thankful that they have more yard area for junk to pile up there. But that's my plan now, I'm, I'm close. Uh, I think it's, it's going in the right direction. I just need to do a little bit more, more work with the track and, and make sure that I've got everything the way I want it before I commit to actually putting down any, any track bed or anything. Center lines are drawn. I think I'm about ready to start laying road bed. Uh, you can see how much further from my original track plan that I've, I've moved my main line. The, uh, the red line to the left is the original where, where I thought I knew I wanted stuff to be and of course it didn't work. I already explained that. Uh, what I have done different now after 
much scratching of my head. Uh, instead of bending the branch line there off this way, I just I went with a right hand turnout switch so that that gives me lots of straight track there back behind Lale and Sons and I, I think it solved a lot of problems as far as spacing goes. Uh, now down at this end, the other end here, uh, my coal dealership I just don't think it was ever going to work in between those two tracks. Uh, just not enough spacing. There's another shed uh, on the back side of that. You can kind of see the floor print there. there there's another shed that, that rail cars go into back behind that. And it just, the, the, the spacing was all wrong back there. So I think that's where I'm going to go with that. Or I might not even put it on there at all. It just Right now it just seems so large and imposing and maybe it's because I don't have any other structures built yet or mocked up. Uh, but right now that's where I'm going with it. Uh, you can see I've got my uh, made photocopies of my switches so that I can just glue the the roadbed right over top of them. If you've never done that, this is the first time I've ever done it. Uh, I think it's going to be a really cool way of doing it before or doing it I've never done it that way before and you might be wondering you've, you've made maybe you remember me saying something about fast tracks and I do have fast tracks jig dual gauge which allows me to build both dual gauge and uh, regular HO narrow gauge and you're thinking well, why, why did you not go ahead and build all of the HO narrow gauge turnouts with your jig. Well, I could have. Uh, I've built three now. I, I, I'm fairly confident that I can do it. The problem was is that those particular turnouts are considerably longer than the Picos that I originally planned with. So unless I wanted to change a lot of things with my spacing and and all of that uh, it was just you know I had done so much work on the track plan anyway I had some some track already cut uh, and then I discovered that that there was a huge difference in the length of, of one turnout to the other and I just didn't want to start over and I already had the Pecos uh, purchased because I you know if you've done any model railroading you know you start planning a year in advance and you really never know what's going to happen until you get there. So I'm here. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm getting ready to start gluing some cork and some homosote. Uh, they don't, or at least I haven't been able to find any cork roadbed at all for HO narrow gauge. So they do make some of this homosote roadbed. And it looks pretty nice when you get it put together with, with track on it. I've never worked with it before. Uh, if you look at it wrong, it will fall apart. I think uh, three of the pieces, when I open it up after getting it in the mail, were already broke. Uh, so I'm going to have to see how that goes, because pretty much everything from the main line over is going to have to be with the Homosote roadbed and that's going to be tough cutting because it does not cut hardly at all. You're going to have, I'm going to have to use a sharp knife to cut it instead of scissors like I do with my cork. But uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> 